Uh, yes, it's a good feeling to come back home and uh, and play against a good team, of course. If you were brought up here, who, who did you support growing up? Which are, which are the Athens football clubs? So yeah, I, I didn't really I didn't really support the team because uh, like my father also uh, was a person who liked to watch football and not being someone who support specific ones. So yeah, I was uh, I was just a fan of football. I mean, you must, did you used to go to many of the stadiums to the yeah. games in in Athens to see the different football clubs, Olympiakos? Yeah, 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 I've been I've been in many stadiums and one of them was uh, was the stadium of Olympiakos. I mean, what what sort of atmosphere? can we expect and what sort of advice can you give to to your teammates of what to expect? No, I think the Greek people, they are really passionate with football and uh, the atmosphere in uh, every stadium is, uh, is amazing. So uh, tomorrow, again, I think it's going to be is, is, uh, is going to be really, really uh, good. If there's, um, <laughs> Please turn your, on your microphone. Your I think your microphone, microphone is yeah, off. Yeah. Okay. Better? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if there's if there's firecrackers, fireworks, flares, laser pens, is this the ultimate test for a football coming to this stadium to play this game? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as you saw last last week, uh, last last game of Olympiacos, uh, there was uh, some uh, some of these things that you said. But uh, in European football, I don't think that they really do the same things because uh, it's it's different game, you know, and they are more uh, they they respect more, I think, the opponents. Hi, um, can I just ask you about when you left Greece at a very young age to come to England and, and join Arsenal? Um, what was that like? Was it was it difficult as a young player leaving home to come and play? Uh, maybe, maybe yes. The first the first month was difficult, but uh, yeah, I was I was able to adapt after a bit, so it was uh, it was a good change of my career. And it was Arsene Wenger that that took you to Arsenal. I know he wasn't there for too long after you arrived but what was his influence on on your career and and I suppose the other players that you played with at that time as well no it was good for me to to meet first Arsene Arsene Aguirre, Mr Arsene Aguirre, because uh, he helped me a lot to adapt as I said to the team and uh, being part of, uh, of the club at that moment so and did you always have coming back to the Premier League back to England as a as a target before you came back to West Ham uh, yeah yeah for sure it was uh, was a target to come back and I'm really glad to to being part of West Ham yeah, I can just ask you again about the crowd. Do you think silencing the crowd is going to be vital because they've, they've got so much passion, and if, if the home team get into the game, they can really push them on? No, as I, as I said, as I said, the atmosphere uh, in Greek stadiums are amazing, and uh, they are uh, they are always passionate with football. Uh, yeah, but I think I think we have also our supporters tomorrow, and uh, I think it's going to be good for us to have them because they can give us more energy as well and and uh, push us more. It promises to be a really good atmosphere in there tomorrow night. I, I guess, yes. Um, you played four games now for West Ham. Uh, for the supporters, what, 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 what makes you excited signing? What do you think you have to, to offer to the team? Sorry, sorry. What makes you excited signing? What do you think you'll be able to bring to the team? No, I mean, the West Ham was also the, the winner of uh, Conference League as well. And the, the, the club uh, has big history, so I didn't have to think a lot about it. I, I was really, really uh, uh, happy when I had the offer and I, was, I, I said directly yes. And in terms of David Moyes, how have you found working with him so far? Yeah, it's, it's, really, good. it's really good to be part of his team. And uh, yeah, we, we try and uh, he, tried to help me. he tries to help me a lot, also his, the coaching staff. So I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm feeling good. I think we're about two hours away from your boyhood club. I think it's pronounced Apollon. Uh, yeah. Apollon. Um, talk me through your memories of, of playing for them. No, this was my team in a really young age. I uh, was not professional there. Um, but uh, yeah, I was uh, there, I think, from uh, six to 18 years old. So I spent a lot of time there and uh, was next to my homes as well. So uh, yeah, they helped me a lot to grow. Hello. Um, what do you expect from Olympiacos? Have you, um, when you've watched them, what, what's impressed you? Uh, what do you like about them? So yes, they have uh, good individual players, and uh, and they they are really good in the counter attack, and they try to. They have some points that we have to take care of. Uh, yeah, so I think they are. There is going to be a tough game tomorrow. Uh, how do you expect to impose yourselves 
on, on them. Uh, one thing their coach mentioned is West Ham have a lot of tall players. So he expects it to be a physical match. Do you want it to be a physical match tomorrow or do you want to play on the, uh, on the floor more? So uh, we always follow uh, the plan of the coach and uh, as you said, we have a really, uh, really good and tall team, as you say. And uh, yeah, the set pieces are uh, one of the parts of the game that we want to 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 make uh, goals. And uh, as we showed this in the in a couple of games that we can we can do this, and this is gonna be, I think, one of the one of the uh, one of our parts that we we can make goals. So, Dinos, I have two questions. The first one is a personal one, and another one related is related to your team. First of all, you just came to Greece after a game against Anstor Villa, where Paul, you had a rather bad result. Is this a new incentive for you? How does this incentivize you as a player to be able to play tomorrow? And uh, second question, as far as you are concerned, uh, seeing you playing for the national uh, Greek team, with the national Greek jersey, how does it feel? Is it, does it feel indifferent to be able to play against uh, another team at uh, a Greek stadium in Greece? Um, so, so for the game against Aslan Villa was of course a result that we we didn't want to and it uh, was a bad day, I can say. But uh, because the plan of uh, English team is, uh, is really busy, I think after after the game, you just forget about it and you are focused to the next one. So this is what, uh, what, what, what we did and we are already focused to the game, to the tomorrow game. So yes, we, we are well prepared and uh, we, are, we are here to, to give our best. And uh, about myself, yeah, for sure, it's, uh, it's a good feeling and, um, and uh, it's a good feeling to be back at home. But uh, when the referee whistle, the game, uh, uh, the game is uh, as always a game with every team. You know, it doesn't matter if this is Greek team or a team from different country. So, Dino, once again, welcome back to Greece. Of course, uh, uh, the last time you were here, I guess you played against uh, uh, Olympiakos when you were playing for Pasiana. The score was uh, one nil. Uh, you played against Fortunis, the only player that is still in the, was in the team. Um, for the question, did you talk about today's match with your fellow players at the national team, like Retsos, Paschalakis? Thank you. So yes, I think I think that uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, the last game was against Olympiakos that I played here for Greek team, and yeah, it's, uh, it's always good to be, to come back here and play against Olympiakos for now, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's good feeling as I said before. Um, yeah, yeah. I spoke. I spoke already with uh, with um, uh, my teammates from national team because uh, I have really good relationship with them, and I'm looking forward to play against them tomorrow. And David, before we get on to the match tomorrow, just on the the sad news about Phil Kem right this week, um, your reflections, obviously, on a man you worked with for, for a long time. Uh, in incredibly sad news. Uh, wonderful man. Gave me a big opportunity in my career. Uh, took me when I was a young manager from the lower leagues and gave me a job in the Premier League. Uh, brilliantly supportive. Uh, I couldn't have had a better, a better chairman as a young coach. When I look at modern football nowadays and uh, how difficult it is for many young managers to to make their way, uh, Bill Kenwright was was great to work with. Uh, great times. Over 11 years with him, and uh, you know we had we had some successful moments. So he'll be sadly missed, and you know, to the whole family, they know know how I feel, and uh, really disappointed that, that Bill's left. In terms of team news for tomorrow, has, has everyone travelled who, who's available? Yeah, the only one who's not travelled uh, is Vladimir Kufal. So uh, he just was a bit tight, so I, I left him at home. Cresswell and Johnson here. They're both here, yes. Are they ready to play? Or? Yeah, well, I think I think as I said, Johnson's probably a little bit further ahead of Crazy at the moment. But uh, but yeah, if if required, they're both ready to play. Yeah. Hi, David. Um, this is an atmosphere that's renowned around Europe, around around the world. You, um, you've managed here with a team mm -hmm. before. Just um, what's it like being a manager on that touchline? I mean, you can see the fans and the. Oh, they've got great support here. Uh, fantastic uh, enthusiasm and. Uh, it's great, isn't it? Coming to a, a football city, which the football really matters. That's uh, that's what you want. You want you want the passion, you want the atmosphere, but we also want good behaviour from from our supporters and from Olympiakos supporters. Uh, it's a game, and we know it's really passionate, but it's really important that 
that uh, everybody we works well together and we, we end up having a good night. There yeah. were a few security concerns, especially in Olympiacos's last home game had to, had to be abandoned. Are you in any way concerned about your players' own safety? I know your family sometimes come and watch these games, mm -hmm. worried about their safety as well. Well, I think we all we want is to, is a good football game. And I said, uh, it's great that you have passionate supporters. But to be a passionate supporter, you have to be a good supporter as well. You're not helping your club. And that includes our supporters as well. So we... We know, so you have to be passionate. You have to be enthusiastic. Support your team well, but uh, but you're doing you're not doing your club any favours if you're if you're getting bans or stadium bans or your team getting thrown out of Europe, for example. So you have to you have to be well behaved, and we want the supporters to be that. Yeah. Just you recall back when you played here with Manchester United back in fourteen, how important the crowd were for their performance, how it got them going into yeah. the game and had an impact on the game at all? It did. It was a it was a really big night. It was probably one of my most disappointing nights. But it ended up being one of my biggest best results when we when we, we won three 0 at Old Trafford. So uh, everybody knows, you know, coming coming to Athens to play any of the teams here can be can be tough games. And Olympiakos is a really tough game. They're they're a serial uh, team in European football for many years. Sometimes the Champions League, sometimes the Europa League, and uh, they've had lots. Of the, the football club itself has had lots of experience of European football. Is it possible to quiet in the crowd, or have you just got to just got to live with it? No, I think you just have to to embrace it and enjoy it. And as I said, you know, if you're a, if you're a football man, you want you want big atmospheres. I'm going to test your memory. What is the craziest atmosphere you've experienced as a player or a manager? <sighs> I'm trying, you, you are testing me now to give you... I actually think that the atmospheres in recent seasons have been have been really big. But the more I go back, I was, a, I was a young player. I played for Celtic against Juventus. I think probably playing over in Chirin was probably the biggest atmosphere I can remember. Probably. Is that firecrackers, fireworks? Yeah, I think just the atmosphere in, in the level of the game as well. I, I think football throughout Europe at the moment... I mean, we've, we've been in Belgium, we've been in Denmark... And I think everywhere we've been, we've found the atmospheres. Strangely, they're a bit different from the Premier League. We've we've got really big supports, and but I think the atmosphere in Europe at the moment is uh, very big. Even in Holland, you can see the the level of uh, you know the way they they support their teams. So welcome, manager. So capitalising on last year's wins of Conference League. Um, is it this your next step, your career and your, and your clubs also? I mean, do you want to win the Europa League? I guess that you have the know-how, you have the knowledge, you have the appropriate tools, you have the players. So is it something I want to add to your personal uh, trophies? Yes, please. Meta Megalis Haras. We've actually had two very good years in Europe. But for West Ham, it's something that's been... It's not. We've not had it regular. We're still... We're not like Olympiacos serially in Europe every season. But the last two years, we've done really well. We've got to a semi-final and a final. Semi-final of the Europa League and then the final of the, the Conference League last year. So I hope we're, I hope it's a wee bit of a lucky charm, European football for me, and we can keep it going. We've, we've had a good run, and I want to try and do it again. We've started this group very well. Tomorrow night is a really tough game for us. But we've had a great start to the group. Hi, David. Hi there. Um, you mentioned Celtic Rangers and Celtic Juventus. Is it actually the people that, that make the atmosphere? Is it, is it having working class people that are grounded in football? Is that really what, what gives the atmosphere more than, yeah. more than just the, the culture? Yeah, I, I do believe the, the, the culture of the city, you know, the, the people are always the reason why you get big atmospheres and you know, but what we've got to remember is football is a game, you know, and we're seeing so many things happening throughout the world just now. So just remember, we're all here to enjoy a game of football. Uh, support your team really passionate because the, the players thrive on it as well. Our players do as well. So we, we really we really just want to see team supporters enjoying it. Great that we get full stadiums, great that we get great atmospheres, part of the game. Uh, that's why when you're a young boy, you want to play at the top level. You want to be involved in these these sort of games. Hi, Dave. It's a follow-up to the question about the atmosphere. When the stadium is so intense and you're trying to communicate with the players and they can't hear you, how tough is that as a manager? Because I remember the game yeah. against Brighton. We had to give a note to Jared. 
So yeah. I'm half one gonna <laughs> get the pin up tomorrow. Yeah. I think as I'm getting older, the, my voice is going as well, and you can hear the hoarseness at the. Uh, but look, it is. I think that you have to nearly, nearly just accept it. You know, your your information is very difficult, or you try and pass it on maybe through the nearest player, to to get to the players. But uh, you know, in big atmosphere, noisy atmospheres, it's very very difficult. And last last for me, David. Um, you spoke about your future um, last Friday, and um, your attention to today, of course. And I know you don't use social media, but it's caused a lot of debate among West Ham fans and social media. So my question to you is, having won the Conference League, having transformed the club, set you know, great records, does it surprise you that people still doubt your managerial ability? I think, I think uh, in this role, you're always going to be questioned if the results. I think we've, we've, I think we've had a great run. I think, I said before, I think West Ham are probably one of the best periods at the moment in time. And uh, you know, people are entitled to their opinion. I don't do social media, you know, uh, partly for the reasons probably that you've just told me that that question, uh, because you want to keep positive, you want to stay strong, and keep doing the right things, and not listening to outside noises. And I try not to listen to outside noises. So welcome, coach. My question is: Have you talked with Dinos Mavropanos about tomorrow's game and Olympiacos in particular? And uh, probably, do you have any discussions about Podence, who used to play with uh, Wolves? And or is there any other player that you will focus on of Olympiacos tomorrow? Uh, yes, we have spoke with Dinos about Olympiacos, and uh, we know uh, we know Podence very well from his time at Wolves. So we're we're well aware of, of him. We we probably have more knowledge of Podence than maybe even Dinos because we we've played against him in quite a bit in recent seasons. He done very well for Wolves. I thought he, he played very well at his time there. Uh, so yeah, we look. We've done as much work as we can. We understand what we can. Uh, we have two games now. One away from home against Olympiacos. Then next two weeks time we we come to London Stadium. So. We'll get to know each other quite well over those two games.